This is Dolany TV. Good afternoon, and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel today. And of course, now we head into the afternoon coverage that has become our regular scheduled programming on a Saturday. That being, well, what is that being? That is the updates from the prospects in. Sweden. That becomes just every single Saturday. That's what we've got to talk about. That Swedish hockey. Just good to go every Saturday by about this time. 3.22 in the afternoon. So my friends, we already talked about Philip Broberg. He got things underway nice and early this morning. Got things done. Got that assist. Matched his point totals. Yip, yip. Hooray. Good to go. Awesome. Done. That's as far as we need to go with it in this video. Now, the other video. This one, the reason this one's special is, yes, I can tell you about Raphael Lavoie. He had a good play in the defensive zone, turned it into a breakaway assist, and la -dee da great good gold, but um, that's, that's again, still not the impactful piece of this video. Raphael Lavoie, yes, he's got 17 points, 22 games. Absolutely, am I over the moon? Absolutely. But right now, it, it it's kind of the complication that is created by this continual... Uh, production that we're seeing from Theodore Lenstrom. Now, obviously, the most casual Oilers fans would have no clue why Theodore Lenstrom has any particular meaning to us as Oilers fans, but Theodore Lenstrom has very integral meaning to us as Oilers fans because you want to talk about a complicated seventh defenseman situation, Theodore Lenstrom is exactly that. For the Edmonton Oilers. We signed him way back in uh, I believe the regular COVID off season or with the COVID pause or whatever you want to call it and we were uh, kind of right 925 entry level contract 26 years old for Theodore Lenstrom. He's a six foot one 190 pound defender so he's not big but he's not small by any means. He's had his little point total so far with Frolunda. He's been with Frolunda for the past this year and last year and he's been a guy that, regularly speaking, averages about 16, 15 points a season. So he's been doing all right the past couple of years. Had a really good year last year with uh, Frolunda having 15 points in 31 games. And then another 5 points in 12 games played in the Champions Hockey League. So they played a total of 43 games and ended up with 20 points in 43 games. That's an improvement. And now 5 points in 15 games. Well, suddenly you can talk about what that is over the course of 50 games played. So for Theodore Lenstrom, he is currently on loan with Frolunda. So that's the other interesting part here is he's a guy that will be recruited to come to Edmonton, hopefully for training camp because, right, that seventh defenseman situation. Yeah, yeah, that. I know, we don't want to talk about it because we'd all love to say, Evan Bouchard and Philip Broberg are going to waltz in on this blue line and get the job done. Good gold, great. But I really don't think that's going to be the case. This really isn't the year for it. But again, depending on taxi squads and the AHL situation, I guess that remains to be seen. But I would much prefer Evan Bouchard and Philip Broberg playing full seasons over in Sweden, getting all their games in and continuing to grow their game rather than see maybe half the games out of what is going to be already a reduced NHL schedule, right? Philip Broberg, day by day, looking more likely he will stay in Sweden. That's fine, that's fine. We're good there. Evan Bouchard, yes. If Evan Bouchard is the guy that's going to make this team, he's the guy that's going to make this team, that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. The only issue is I'd rather see him in a top six role than see him not in a top six role, i.e. the seventh defenseman or a taxi squad situation. And outside of that, you've got William Legison, who as well is on loan in the Alsvenskan, continues to do things well, but prior to Lenstrom, figured to be the seventh defenseman. Right, right there again. Again, there it is, and I'm blanking on it every time, but... William Lagason, Evan Bouchard, Theodore Lenstrom. Those are your names you need to be aware of. And don't you mind throwing Chris Russell into that mix as well. You cannot forget that Chris Russell may very well end up sitting quite a few of the games this year. 
Well, magically, if you have a taxi squad with cap implications and stuff, you could very well have Chris Russell in that taxi squad and him not count against the cap. Think about that as well, right? Uh, for a Vancouver, a Louis Erickson, for Calgary, even if they find themselves wanting to give a rookie a shot, a Milan Lucic, or there are so many implications to what a taxi squad could mean. But at the end of the day, it really does come down to who your seventh defenseman is this year and how you see the top six shaping up. Right now, as it stands on the left side of the ice, all we have is Caleb Jones, Chris Russell, and Darnell Nurse. And if you want to talk about, am I feeling good about that? Realistically, no, I'm not. But Caleb Jones, as long as he proves to be a capable top four defender, because Chris Russell is no longer a top four capable defender every game, well, then we're fine. But you're still relying on Darnell Nurse to play incredible defenses in number one, where we've seen him get exposed if he plays a few too many minutes a night. And then you've got the conversation, well, okay, now you've got Chris Russell in the top six. That leaves no room for Evan Bouchard because, guys, we're already rolling at best, right? Look at this. Go this way here. And you're already rolling three right-hand shot defensemen that are legit NHL players, Ethan Bear, Tyson Berry, and Adam Larson. Well, now you're rolling... Evan Bouchard in there as well. You got two pairs worth of defensemen that are right-hand shot. That, according to Dave Tippett's math, not my math, according to how Dave Tippett likes to set up his defense, that does not compute, and that is where I am arguing from. I'm not arguing from the fact that I think the Oilers are uh, not in a good position to do it, but Dave Tippett, we saw what he does last year with the... Uh, Defensive pairs, you're not you're not going to see him go out there and pair a right-hand D and a right-hand D. I just don't think that's likely, especially not Evan Bouchard with the choices you have, Adam Larson or Tyson Berry. You know Ethan Bear's back with Darnell Nurse this year. That's fine. That's Danny. I'm good with it. But that's kind of the situation we find ourselves with right now. So... Right? But again, you could complicate it further and add Philip Broberg into the conversation... But all the while, in the seventh defenseman conversation, you have Theodore Lenstrom, who scored four goals, three assists, seven points in 16 games for Frolunda HC over there in the SHL, and he's looking rather sharp, all right? That wrist shot on the point on the power play, he scored a couple goals doing that this year. It's almost cut and paste, right? Bing, bang, back of the net every time he gets that puck. Very extreme. Yeah, I mean, it still looks like a slot shot. I don't know if that's just SHL ice or European ice or what the situation is there, but it's from the high high slot, low point, and he goes out there and just rips it back in the net past the goalie, and that puck's coming out of the net just as fast as it went in, so you know he's clearly doing the job right. So when you look at Theodore Lindstrom, if you'd like that kind of shot, right, obviously Chris Russell doesn't have that kind of shot, so you know what? Okay, all of a sudden, yeah, good to go, seventh defenseman. But again, go back to the taxi squad. Is Theodore Lindstrom a guy you have on the taxi squad? Now suddenly, there you go, that solves the complication as long as you don't have too many guys ahead of them in the depth chart to make it worthwhile to carry them. That's the other side. And I guess that's where we really get into this complicated question. If the taxi squad is a thing, which it looks likely will be a thing, okay, Theodore Lenstrom does not complicate the seventh defenseman situation. If it is not, Theodore Lenstrom 100% fully and completely complicates the defenseman situation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the argument. Theodore Lundstrom today, having a good game. Goal and assist today. Brings him up to that total of seven points. That goal, it was silky smooth. I loved watching it. It was it was a good goal. But uh, now, the conversations, which we've already had, are interesting. And it continues to be seen what happens next. Here with Theodore Lundstrom and the Edmonton Oilers. Evan Bouchard and the Edmonton Oilers. Philip Broberg and the Edmonton Oilers. And, of course, William Lagesson all the while having one of the best seasons in the Alsvenskan for defensemen as well. So question what you will. It's going to be interesting to see here what happens next 
for the Edmonton Oilers and their defensive situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson, this is Stolany TV. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon. It's been a hard ground and weekend. This is now video number eight uploaded to Dolany TV since Friday morning. We've still got Sunday to go, and we got this evening to go, which, uh, you know, if that hockey guy there, if he ends up maybe cutting off his stream a little early, maybe we'll pick up the residue and get talking live everything and all things Edmonton Oilers and maybe a little NHL talk there too. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm up on Oda here.